is. So in the last video we finished coding up all the logic for what the computer is going to do and how it's going to move. And I think in this video what we're going to do is we are just going to clean up the UI, make it look a little bit better. So if we run it right now and check out what it's currently looking like. So we've got the board on the left, we've got some words on the on the right. If we play and it's in one player, we say X, Peter goes there, X over here, he blocks us. And there we managed to get a win, but it just doesn't really look very nice on the right side. So I kind of want to just clean that up a bit. So for stars, I want to just kind of make this smaller, make this bigger, kind of have it match. And maybe instead of saying game over, I want to say, I want to have it say like X1 or O1 or if the, the board is full, we'll say it's a tie. So let's get working on that. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to go up to the very top. And we're just going to type in, we're going to add a variable, we'll call it winner, and it'll just be an empty text, like an empty string. And that's what we're going to fill in later whenever we figure out who won the game. And so the way we're going to implement that is by, well, let's go to here and redraw and like, let's just make the original font be a size of 40 and we can just get rid of small font. We don't really need that anymore. And then, so down here where we used small font, we'll just change that and make it say font. So now they're both the same size. And the way we kind of center it so it's not kind of offset is by going in here in each of the blitz. And what we're going to say is instead of saying screen width minus turn text dot get width minus 10, we're going to say 700 because the whole thing is six or the whole thing is 800. And then off to the right side, there's 200 pixels, so the center of that is 700. We're going to subtract um, the turn text divided by 2, and that'll center it, and we'll take off the minus 10. And then down here, we're going to go and do the same thing. So we'll take all that out. We'll say 700 minus the game over text. Um, oh, dot get width. We need that definitely divided by 2, and the same thing up here. Fantastic. And then as for the heights, or like the Y values, we can keep those the same. And then here, instead, uh, so we'll say, we'll keep that as turn, and then here, instead of saying game over, what we want to do is display um, just the winner. It's the variable we created up there, and then down below, we're actually going to assign that with the proper value. And so one more thing we can do real fast is um, up here, I'm going to say if not, game over and then I'm going to tab this over so if somebody does win I don't want it to say oh it's X's turn or O's turn because the game ended it's nobody's turn so we, this will kind of just take off the text as soon as somebody wins and all we'll see is whether X won O won or if it was a tie so that is looking good okay so next what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to our main while loop that's actually running the whole entire game and we're going to add some code under where we check if it's game over. So we're gonna say if it is game over, so if game over, and then we're gonna to check to see if the move count is less than nine or not. So we'll say if move count is less than nine, then what we wanna do is say if move count percent two is equal to one, and then we wanna set the winner text to x1 and then otherwise we will we'll just say else winner is equal to o1 and so the reason it's um, we're checking if u equals one is because up above we increment it so this will kind of just fix the offset and then what we're also going to do is in the case that if move count is not less than nine so we're going to go down and then if, so if move count is nine, then we will say winner is gonna say tied game. So that means the board is full and no one actually won the game. And then, so we're just gonna copy this code right here. And then we're also gonna paste it down below in all the other places we checked to see if the game was won. So here, game over is equal to that. We'll paste it right there. And if we scroll, I think there's one more spot we need it to be. Okay, so we're actually missing a game over check. So I'm um, right here in this if statement where it's we're playing against the computer and it's the player's move. We want to say game over is equal to is game over of board vowels. 
and then we're going to paste in that check right there to display the proper text if it is, if the game has ended. And we can get rid of these print statements. Those were just there in order to, to kind of debug some stuff earlier. So we don't need those anymore. Actually, I guess we can keep them out in case we need it later, but we'll just comment them out so we don't fill out the so we don't fill up the output. And so now let's run this and kind of see what changes we've made. So now it's in one player mode. X goes he goes right there, X goes right there, we block him off, he blocks us, we block him, he blocks us. And so nobody won, it says tied game, and it no longer says who's turn it is. If we press space, it'll go back to saying X, it's X's turn. And then so it'll let us play again with no problem. Everything is looking fine on that end. Let's see what happens if the computer does win. So X here, X here, X here, he blocks us, you're at 01. So that's looking a little bit better. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some text under there, under here. So we're going to create a new label and it's going to say what mode the game is in. So whether we're in one player mode or two player mode. So all we have to do is scroll up to the redraw game window function. And then we can just go right here, for example. Yeah, we can go right here. And we're going to create a new, a new text object, I guess you could call it. So we'll say like turn text, well, not turn text, um, game mode text. And it's going to equal font dot render, just like the ones above. And what this one's going to say is either one player or two player mode. And so we need to actually create something before we actually initialize it. So we'll say, we'll say like game mode this is going to equal one player, capitalize the P, um, if is one is two player, or so we can just say if not is two player, and then else um, it'll equal two player. So yeah, and then down here, what we're gonna do is we'll set the text to game mode. And then what we also need to pass in are just a couple more parameters. So we'll say one, and then we'll set the color to white, just like everything else, so that all of it can match. And then we just have to display that, and that'll always be displayed whether the game's over or not, so that the user can know what mode they're in. And so we will just win dot blitz, and we will say game mode text, and. We're gonna put it at the point of same like just like above. We're gonna say 700 minus game mode or not game mode word, game mode text dot get with divided by two, and then the y is gonna be the y will be hmm. so we have game over up here, and it's at 20 plus the turn text dot get high. So let's copy this paste that here and we also want to add um, the game over text site so game over text dot get height and then we'll make the 20 like 40 and let's just see how that looks so let's run this and it crashes because so the only problem is this game over text equals font dot render so this whole thing actually needs to be taken out of the if statement and called up here and then it'll display it if the game's over but we need to actually have it created outside of there so now when we run it it'll come on and it says it's a, it's in two player mode if i type one it goes to one player if i type two it switches back to two players so when it's in two player i can choose where o goes where x goes i can choose everything and then even mid game, I can switch it to one player, and then so now if I go if I go like here for example, um, the computer wins, and then if I just press space, the game starts over. So I guess one thing we can change is just switching. So maybe we should put the like the game one on the very top, then the whoever's turn it is, and then display who um, won the game on the bottom. So we'll just rearrange the order of that, kind of just so we don't have this weird looking gap right off the bat. So in order to do that, all we have to do is go in here. So this is where we display the game mode. Instead of saying all this, 
we're just going to set it to like, we'll set it to like 10. And then this turn text, instead of saying it, this one's 10, what we're going to say is, <clears throat> so we are going to first copy all of this. Yeah, we're going to copy this. We'll cut it and we'll just drop this on the very top. So we'll right after where we create fonts. And so, so that we can actually use the height of game mode text later on. And then in the next one where it's turn text, the Y value of it is going to be like 20 plus. Um, so instead of turn text, it'll be game mode text dot get height. And then the last thing is right here, this one's going to be 40 plus, and instead of um, plus the turn text plus game mode text dot get height. So now that should all be rearranged and it should look a little bit better. Let's test it out. So we got two player on top. It's X's turn. X switch to one player. I go X go. We go there. He blocks us there. Okay, so that's a tied game, and it displays it. Hmm. But we but now we end up getting a gap because it's nobody's turn. I see. So perhaps. So maybe now what we should do actually is you know what it's fine honestly it's it's not that in the world it's good enough I think it gets the point across tied game um, if it's two player and let's say X wins if we got X one we can start over so it's all fully working. I mean, yeah, that kind of wraps up this series. Over the course of this tutorial, what we learned how to do was, I mean, for starters, just create the, the actual code that runs um, tic-tac-toe in Python. We learned some. We learned a little bit about how to use Pygame and kind of get this whole game displayed on the screen. We learned how to program the bot and like tell it how to pick certain moves depending on the situation of the board. We went over how to display text on the screen and changing the text depending on different situations, changing game modes, determining if the game is over, how to actually let the game start back up again after the game ends. And yeah, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed this whole series. Just comment down below what kind of games you guys want to learn how to make next. I hope this was very useful for you. I hope you learned a lot. And yeah, peace.